Hello everyone. If you would like to perform trichoscopy but have not started yet, this video is for you. Trichoscopy is magnification, but it is more than just magnification of the scalp surface and the hair shafts because it also allows to visualize structures which are otherwise invisible to the naked eye. We have introduced the term trichoscopy in 2006. So this year it is celebrating the 15th birthday. It is not a grown up yet, but still I really enjoy seeing how it is developing over the years. Trichoscopy can be performed with any dermoscope, either handheld or a digital video dermoscope. And I encourage everyone who is starting to start with a handheld dermoscope because this may give you some insight for the future in which digital dermoscope you want to invest. How should we start learning trichoscopy? We have written a book, a trichoscopy book, which is 600 pages big. And I would like to discourage you to start learning trichoscopy with reading this book. I believe that trichoscopy should be learned just as a foreign language, step by step, word by word, and patient by patient. Take a dermoscope on the scalp of the patient, analyze what you see, and then try to compare your opinion with the opinion of the book. And this way, step by step, disease by disease, it will be easy to learn trichoscopy. Today, I will share with you some basic information about what to take a look at and which structures to evaluate. And the four major structures which we evaluate in trichoscopy are the hair shafts and the hair shaft structure, the follicular openings, and they look from the perspective of a dermoscope like dots. So they are called the dots. We look at the skin surface and also at the scalp blood vessels. In a healthy person, the hair shafts are uniform in structure and in color. You may have in a patient who has graying hair, hairs of different colors, but a single hair shaft is always uniform in color and it is uniform in shape. This is the most well-known hair shaft structure abnormality in a patient with a hair disease. These are the exclamation mark hairs in a patient with alopecia areata. If you have a hair which is growing and then some inflammation is having an impact on the hair growth and it decreases the hair mitotic activity, then the hair shaft will become thinner and thinner and thinner as it grows. So the distal part of the hair will be the part with the normal mitotic activity and the proximal part, the part at the base, will be the part with the low mitotic activity. Typical trichoscopy image in a patient with alopecia areata you will usually find the exclamation mark hairs at the hair bearing margin of the hairless patch and exclamation mark hairs are a symptom of high disease activity. What can happen to these three exclamation mark hairs? Let's take a look at the first one. Imagine that the hair is growing, growing, growing. It becomes thinner and thinner and thinner until it breaks off. When it breaks off, the hair residue will be left in the hair follicle and from the perspective of a dermoscope, it will appear like a black dot. And this is a typical trichoscopy image of black dots. If you take a look at the second exclamation mark hair, it does not break off, but it keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. And it will be a very long exclamation mark hair. And these hairs we call the tapered hairs. And here again is an image of a tapered hair in trichoscopy in a patient with alopecia. This is a sign of a relatively low ongoing disease activity in a patient with alopecia area. And the third option, the third option is that it became thinner and thinner and thinner as it grew, but then you introduce treatment and the hair shaft becomes thicker again. And when it becomes thicker again, yes, a type of constriction will form. And these constrictions are called the Paul Pincus constriction. And this is a trichoscopy image which shows a hair with this type of constriction, which is within the hair shaft as it becomes 
thinner and then it becomes thicker again. And some hairs may have multiple Volpinkus constrictions depending on the disease activity and on the method of therapy. Exclamation mark hairs are typical for alopecia areata, but they are not specific. They are not sufficient to make the diagnosis of alopecia areata because there may be some exclamation mark hairs also in trichotillomania and also in some other diseases, especially in toxic alopecia or chemotherapy-induced alopecia. So we need some other trichoscopy features to be convinced that we made the right diagnosis. The second type of abnormality I would like to talk about today are the dots. As indicated before, when you take a look with your dermoscope at a hair follicle opening with a hair shaft inside or with no hair shaft inside, it will always appear like a small dot. The black dots, which I mentioned already today, the black dots mark hair follicle openings which are filled with a residue of a hair. Black dots are also not specific for alopecia areata, they are very characteristic but not specific. They may be present in some other diseases. I will show the examples just in a moment, but this means that we still need another feature to be convinced that our trichoscopy diagnosis is correct. These are some examples of diseases which may present with black dots. This is the chemotherapy induced alopecia, the tinea capitis, trichotillomania. The black dots may be sometimes visible in lichen thana pilaris, but this is quite rare. If these hair follicles are empty, they will be filled with either sebum or keratotic material, or maybe both, a mixture of sebum and keratotic material. And then these hair follicle openings will appear as yellow dots from the perspective of dermoscope. And this is a field of view full of yellow dots, very typical for long-lasting alopecia areata in a grown-up. So the yellow dots, they mark empty hair follicles filled with sebum or with keratotic material. Another structure which is of interest when we perform trichoscopy is the scalp surface. The most common abnormality in terms of scalp surface is the scaling, and we can recognize the diffuse scaling typical for psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis, discoid lupus erythematosus, and many other diseases, or the perifollicular scaling, which is most common in patients with follicular tropic cicatricial alopecia. In alopecia areata, the disease which I'm using today to show how to perform trichoscopy in alopecia areata, usually we will see no scalp surface abnormalities. However, it may happen that the patient comes in with some scaling, which is resulting from the alcohol-based topical drugs, and then discontinuation of the drug, maybe some moisturizing will be sufficient to treat the scaling. And the fourth structure are the blood vessels. Also, there are no specific blood vessel abnormalities in alopecia areata. However, in patients who are using corticosteroids, either topical or sometimes intralesional, there may be skin atrophy and the skin atrophy may present with an enhanced network of blood vessels. And usually this requires no treatment. So to summarize, when we perform trichoscopy, we will always look at four different types of structures, the hair shaft, the follicular openings, which will appear as dots under the dermoscope at the skin surface and the scalp vessels. Most common trichoscopy features of alopecia areata are the exclamation mark hairs, the black dots and the yellow dots, and some other features which I mentioned today. When you start learning trichoscopy, try learning trichoscopy as a foreign language, step by step as you need it, not as the book goes. And if you would like to hear more about trichoscopy and about hair diseases, I encourage you to take a look at my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.